Hey guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to build this tower. Stay tuned. Hey folks, so uh, we're going to put a wind generator tower up today and I'm going to show you how I do it and uh, hopefully um, I'll be informative enough to where anybody could follow along. So I had, uh, these are just old tire chains off some equipment. I'm going to wind up dismantling some of these links and uh, welding them onto these thread protectors. These aren't couplings, these are thread protectors. They usually come with the pipe. I bought, I bought some, uh, what I did here is I bought, I purchased some inch and a half conduit and uh, they came with these thread protectors. I guess they could be used as couplings. I'm going to use them as couplings. They're certainly strong enough. At any rate, we're going to attach one here. I thought this might make a good pivot for the wind generator tower. And then we're going to attach one, let me see, on here. This is for the gin pole. You'll see how it's all going to come together um, as we move along with the project. But, uh, all right, enough jabbering. Let's get, let's get this party going. I'm going to do every other link. If I pull this link off, that'll free this link up. And if I skip this link and I go to that link, it'll free this link up. <laughs> okay. There's two. So we're going to need a total of uh, 12 of these, all right? We're going to attach it at four, four wires at three separate points. Owie. All right, something like that. A little thinner chain might be in order here too. I just used what I had. Okay, there they are. There's all our links. Now these, I'm going to weld four of these on two of these couplings. Like I said, I'm not trying to win any beauty contests for how great my welds look, but they're strong and they're not going to come off of there. So there's these two. And uh, so, so what next? Well, what I'm going to need to do, ouch, a mama. Alright, so in case you're wondering, I cut this end off, the threads, because this is where my turbine's going to go. And the blades are 7 foot in diameter, alright? So we got to measure from here down far enough where it'll clear the blades. And I figure we'll just go 4 feet. That'll, be, that'll give us plenty. Okay, there it is. Plenty strong for what we're trying to accomplish. I'm gonna weld that right there. Now this is not a real high stress part. This is only gonna hold the wind generator vertical and only occasionally will it be lowered. Alright, I just made a couple little notches here just to increase the the uh, surface area. The very next thing we need to do is we need to take our final thread protector and we need to make a spot for our gin pole. Looks like we've got 
got it lined up pretty good. All right, now the only other thing we need to do is we need to get these dead men rod uh, fabricated. And I just use ordinary 3 8 rebar for that. Now, we're gonna need three of these, and the reason being is because the fourth one's actually gonna, um, the fourth dead man's gonna be where our winch is located. And so we won't use uh, one of these rebar type dead men on that. That'll be on the side that actually raises and lower where we bolt our winch to the, to the top of the uh, concrete. We wanna cut our dead man rod right at four feet. And uh, the holes for these things shouldn't be any less than three and a half feet deep. And uh, the reason why we're cutting it at four, um, they'll stick above the ground just a little bit. And of course we need a little bit of room for the eye. And then on the other end, we're gonna bend just an L shape just to hold it into the concrete. There we go, three bars at four feet long. So let's go ahead and make our eyes. I'm gonna take that over to my torque. So as you can see, we got these all welded up. That's gonna make for a real strong eye. That's not gonna pull free. And with this hook on the other end, once we get the concrete in the hole, ow, that's still hot, Carrie. All right, so I've chosen my site here, and uh, you notice it's quite a ways from the house, but uh, I'm not too worried about that, because remember, we're gonna be running three-phase power. So to start off things, I, I mark the center. So this will be my center mark. There he is. Yeah, that's a good boy. That's my good boy. <laughs> What's the Roro doing, huh? What's he doing? What's he doing? So that we're going to mount on the cotton top of the concrete. Dirt so dry and powdery it won't hardly stem. Diggers. Look at look at there. We got we got our three foot six. So next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna make sure that, and I've already done it, but you gotta make sure you do this at the bottom of every hole. You're gonna bail it out at the bottom. Worst thing you could do is have a tapered hole because there's nothing really holding it down in there. 
But if we bail it out and taper it at the bottom, that's gonna allow for it to make a mechanical lock. And it should make a pretty good uh, dead man as well. Um, and like I said, we're gonna be placing this on here. So I'm gonna get some J bolts, probably weld some rebar onto the bottom of the J bolts to go all the way to the bottom of the hole. And that's what we'll place this on. That'll make a nice mount for it. And that's going to leave this. That's going to be just about right. That's going to be the end of our gin pole right here. So if our winch is centered right about here, we can put the eye hook right on the end of there and it'll pull it straight down. Perfect. Now, so we got it centered there. And then here's our 10 foot mark. And that's going to give us a nice straight line all the way to this mark here so we'll just put our put our mark right there that'll be the center of the hole Six. <sighs> Boy, the old spaghetti noodles aren't what they used to be. Man alive. I'm not used to this physical labor, but it will be exciting when it's all done. It's the last hole, so we'll get some concrete in it before the sun goes down, and we should be all set up and ready to put our wind generator up by next week. I can't wait. So there's just a couple more elements that I didn't fab up yet, but this is this is going to be a a little place to actually clamp uh, the tie down on the um, the gin pole, and then I got a couple couple pieces of bar with some bolts welded on, and that'll be for the actual mounting of the winch. I'll make sure to make sure that that's perfect. Hang on, I just dumped dirt all over me. Make sure that's perfect. I'll actually bolt these on before I set it down into the mud. And, you know, that way it'll be it'll be perfect, and then I can take the uh, the winch on and off, you know, at will. So um, let's get some mud mixed and get it in the hole. How about that? All right. So I just put my gallon of water in there. Too much water. I forgot these bags they have wet sand and gravel because they leave them outside. Unlike the uh, standard Quick Creek. I'll mix the next one a little better. Obviously. The one gallon was way too much. Let's start out with a half a gallon. got the mud in the hole and all that stuff. I'm trying to figure out how to do this without getting it all over my hand. Okay. That took five sacks. Maybe it took six. I don't remember now. But at any rate, we're going to make sure Let's <laughs> go. 
These other ones, we're just gonna put two sacks and then, um, yes. Don't spill the gold. Don't spill the gold. Got my helper with me today. One bucket. We're gonna put two down the hole and then we're gonna put our dead men. Garrett's already got a rhythm going here, so it looks like looks like we're in good hands with Mr. Garrett. What do you say, Garrett? I say you're wrong. <laughs> And look at what we got here. All right, so we're gonna make sure that's down in there good. That's something like that would. See, you figured off right off the bat how much water to put in there. I put too much on the first batch. I think he's gonna go for it. He's flat out just gonna go for it. He just stuck the whole shamammer bammer in there. How would you rate that versus mixing it in the wheelbarrow, Garrett? Uh, I don't know, about a five. What's mixing it in the wheelbarrow rated out? I don't know. Three? Okay, <laughs> so it's better. Is that, is that what you're saying? Yeah, a little bit. Okay. Garrett's usually the kind of guy you can't keep quiet, but he ain't got a word to say today. I don't see any reason to go any further than that. Yeah, that's a good mix there. <clears throat> There we go. It's great right there. I guess we'll put the rest of, rest of what you got over there in that hole. Okay, so here's our solution. We are gonna cut the bottom out of this. Ooh. Yeah, watch yourself. Yeah, don't I know. And we're gonna make our own sono tube out of a bucket. I shouldn't have cut this good bucket. Well, oh. I, I think it would be a, an okay idea. It's just only the one thing now with that. You gonna hit me with something negative? <laughs> <Wait>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, that's the end of part one. We have... Uh, if you want to see the rest of this, you're going to have to come and see part two, which I should have done by the weekend. So what we're going to do next is we're going to, we're going to get this wind generator, uh, all the wires on it, all the guy wires put on it. We're going to get the winch all hooked up and we'll probably mount the wind generator and all that fun stuff and uh, maybe, maybe run some wires. and. Uh, See how this thing starts to perform out here in this in this here Montana. All right, folks. Thanks for watching. And hit that like button and be sure to subscribe.